and happy blessed Tuesday. So today is a brand new day and I hope and pray that you are doing awesome on this fine, fine rainy day. At least that was in Canada. <laughs> it's really a, one of those days where you just wake up and you see the rain showering upon you. I'm just like, it's okay. I know. It'll be nice and sunny and fresh air if I go out for a walk afterwards. It's all good. It's all good. Anything, honestly, of all things, you just have to live your life for God and then let yourself see your life through God's eyes. Therefore, the persecution, through trial and tribulations, through storms, through anything, any hatred towards you, even when you're doing the right thing for God, it's not you that they're hating. They're denying Christ. They're hating on God, not you. You're just the messenger doing your part for God's glory and for God's kingdom. And that's it. If they don't like you for saying the truth, that's God's work though. You did your part to align the person and that's it. That's all you can do. And you did your Christian duty. That's it. Rejoice. Be happy because at least you know that you are firmly gripped and rooted in Christ, not being afraid to be to not deny Christ out there. You have to be afraid to put Christ out there in the midst of this world. Because there's so much influence of this world that is so against Christ on every single level, which I'm not gonna talk about, but you probably know what I'm talking about without even me saying it. So, with that said, I hope and pray that you're doing well. Stay strong, stay fervent, stay prudent. And as I would have said before all my podcasts and all my videos, let's get started. So my true words, Christ, I want to ask you the question, how to practice exterior humility? What is the first thing that comes to your mind when it comes to exterior humility? For me, first and foremost, before I even think about practicing my exterior humility, is the first know for a fact that we have to empty ourselves like an empty vessel in order for us to receive God's graces in our hearts, right? Because when you're going to try to practice humility, when your heart's full of pride and all the complete opposite of the virtues, you have to know how to empty yourself first. You got to get rid of those distractions. got to get rid of those vices. You got to get rid of that sense of pride. That just seems to be a blockage in accepting the truth of Christ and accepting what you need to work on in order for the virtues of humility to sink in, the graces of humility to really sink in and to really be so embedded in your heart so that whenever the devil tries to work upon you, Nothing will work. No matter how much the devil tries to work on you, it will not work. So that's why first and foremost, before you even consider practicing exterior humility, you got to empty yourself. Be that empty vessel in order for you to be ready to receive God's graces. To do what it takes to practice exterior humility. Right? Because ultimately... Remember my true words of Christ that humility drives Satan away like no tomorrow, right? So that's why when it comes to accepting the truth about Christ and what's right, pride is always the full obstacle because it's like, who do you think you are? Why are you telling me what to do, right? Every word of that sentence and that attitude alone is full of pride. Because it's like you think you know everything and like you don't need anyone to tell you what to do. Yeah. So in order for you to be practicing your exterior humility, accepting constructive criticism, constructive cr criticisms, right? We're not perfect, right? We're not perfect in every single way. So when it comes to hearing feedback or whatnot, just be like, okay, thank you for your feedback and whatnot. I'll see what I can do. I'll work on it. Yeah. Right? It begins there. It's the willingness to learn, the docility. Right? That's why docility and humility go hand in hand. Otherwise, you're just following the pathway of pride, which is the complete opposite of what our Blessed Mother Mary is. Right? So that's why run to our Blessed Mother Mary first and foremost. She has all the graces you need to practice humility through your thoughts, your words, your actions, the way you speak, the way you think. 
the way you are as a person, right? Because really, at the end of the day, we can get all the graces, but then it's what we do with it, right? It's the willingness to know what to do with the gifts, the graces, with full humility. Yeah, you may have the gift of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but like it's how you practice that with humility that's so important because at the end of the day, we need to be using our gifts and our graces for God's glory and for God's kingdom. When God showers you with so much graces, He's expecting you to use them for his, his kingdom and for his glory and for his name, not for your own name's sake, right? So therefore, we always have to keep on setting the bar higher and higher and higher. Whenever we're blessed with a certain amount of graces and gifts, we have to use it. We need to use it because you don't want God being like, I've given you everything you needed to pursue what I've placed in your heart to pursue. And what have you done with it? Right? You want to be accountable to yourself to know that you're using everything, all the resources that God's giving you to do what it takes for what he's calling you to do as a true word for Christ. Right? Like God may strip away things of your normal life, but that is for us to realize that he's trying to allow us to have that clear mind and that clear vision to know what to do. Because when we are too distracted, we can't hear God's voice. We can't see what we need to see. We're so blinded. We're so clouded. Right? And especially with our decision making, it becomes even more clouded because you have so many distractions. Right? So before you even pursue anything, you need to know for sure from the bottom of your heart that is for God, God's glory, not for your own, and you're not pursuing your own selfish desires. Because I'm telling you, pursuing your own selfish desires does not lead you anywhere fruitful. That I can guarantee you. Because it's leading to self-destruction, it's leading you to pursue the life of the world, not for God. And then what? And then endless chasing over and over and over. You get a new car, you get the top phone, you get this, you get that. And then what? And then the cycle starts again. So that's why when it comes to practicing exterior humility, you have to know that you really need to be distract free. Distract free. Therefore, your social media too. It's how you use it for God's glory, for God's kingdom. Like, yeah, people are going to hate you. People are going to like talk behind your back. People are going to gossip about you. It's part of the package. When you do something for God, don't care about that. That's that's not for you to care about. That's not for you to worry about. That's not for you to panic about. That's not, not that's not your job. That's God's job. What your job is is to pursue what God wants you to pursue. And you don't stop. You don't stop. No matter how much obstacles the enemy tries to place in front of your face and how much discouragement or doubts that the enemy tries to plant in your heart, you don't give in. You don't yield to that. Why? Because that's what the enemy wants you to be. To be distracted. Distracted, distracted, distracted. But God wants you to have a full, clear vision of what you need to see, what you need to do, and what your journey is, and to fulfill it. With full humility whether you have people being like oh what are you doing you're pointless trying to discourage you I'm telling you the enemy will speak to you through people closest to you through even people he's least expect right so persecution when it comes to going through persecution in itself practicing exterior humility is the number one thing to do do not yield to anger. Do not yield yourself into showing hatred. That's what the enemy wants you, to feel agitated, to feel irritated, to yield to becoming angry because otherwise the enemy wants you to what? Quit, right? So when someone so shows hatred and persecution towards you, you just walk away. You shake the dust off your feet, and you walk away. That's what Jesus told the disciples, the apostles. Shake the dust off your feet 
and move along, basically. Like, Jesus got persecuted. Jesus got persecuted one more us, right? When we try to practice humility, it's part of the package, right? But I'm not saying allow yourself to be bullied or walked over like a doormat, no. You still have your dignity for God within your heart. I'm not, I'm not saying to allow yourself to let people walk all over you, no. That's not what humility is. Humility is actually showing that love and that care and that kindness regardless of how much hatred you get. And it's really accepting the truth even though the truth may hurt. And looking out to her blessed mother Mary is the full example of that. She got persecuted when she was pregnant with Jesus and she didn't tell him, no! people like no well, she, I'm pretty sure she's not like that she just trusted in God and that is what we should do as we practice exterior humility is entrusting ourselves in God even more when we undergo hardships when we undergo child tribulations when we undergo times of unknowing times of no answers at this right moment you allow yourself to know that this is my your opportunity to practice humility. Accepting that the answers will come in God's time. And that takes humility, my friends. You know why? Because if you let pride give in, then you're going to make irrational decisions. Left, right, and center. And then you're going to dig yourself a hole. You're going to have a hard time getting out of. And then lying to yourself. Living a lie. Realizing that I've made the wrong choice. I should have gone this way, but I decided to go another way. Because why? My loneliness, my selfish desires, my lack of trust in God's time. Yeah. Irrational decisions are based upon pride. Because it's what we want, not what God wants. Right, so that's why we have to have that active effort to acquire that virtue of humility for us to practice it exteriorly. When you really try your best everything for God, the more you will go through persecution. It is what it is. Because my friends, people will love you and people will hate you. It's a sad fact, but it is what it is, right? When you try to tell someone the truth and they refuse to accept that truth, you did what you can for God. You did what you can. You leave that in God's hands at that point. Because proclaiming the truth out there, proclaiming the truth of Christ, calls for persecution. Hello? The saints got martyred, okay? They got martyred for their faith in God. And now they're up in heaven, enjoying life up there with God. Because why? They live their life for God with full exterior humility. If they didn't live their life with full exterior humility, then they would have been part of the world. They would have fully immersed in this world and not be fruitful at all. But instead, they chose a life of righteousness for God. They chose to live their life for God, despite of what hardships they knew was coming towards them. And it was well worth it. And now, they're in heaven, and they have set the footprints for us to follow and to be knowledgeable. They've written books for us to be educated and to not be ignorant and to choose what's the right pathway and to choose what's right and to be willing to live your life for Christ. Right? Because even though they are no longer living on this earth, they really were inspired to bring more souls to heaven 
through their writings, through their works. So it continues on. They didn't, they weren't, they didn't die and then the game over, right? Their mission still continues through their writing and through their works and the inspiration of the works that they did, right? So they, they can inspire more saints to be, to be in God, with God in heaven, right? So we constantly have to move in our life with prudence, discretion, together with charity and courtesy and love. And it all begins with radiating God's love from your heart. God gives you his love every day. Allow yourself to see that love, not the hatred that the enemy tries to magnify for you to see. No matter how much the enemy tries to magnify hatred and negativity in your life, don't allow it to consume you. Don't allow it to ever consume you. Because if you're getting persecuted and the enemy is trying to work double time on you, realize, my friend, that you are doing something right. Because anything that is all for the golden grace of God or the enemy tries to stop it. Despite of how beautiful it is, despite how fruitful it is, the enemy will always try to stop it. That's why you gotta be aware, alert, and fully awake in these different angles of how the enemy will try to make you stop. Especially with ministry, same thing. When the enemy knows it's working, it's growing, and it's working within hearts for a lady especially, the more reason the enemy will try to work double, triple, quadruple time on you. And he will start where? at the root of that ministry, the root. That's why I realized that your guards always have to be up. And what is the most tactic strategy he uses? Pride. Because once pride consumes you, that's where the corruption begins. And that, my friends, is how the enemy will try to get a control of you. Little by little, when you allow him to get more control of you. That's why when we have a full conditioned mind, nurtured and nourished with our blessed Mother Mary's graces, God's graces, the power and the energy is Christ, you're fully equipped with what it takes to do everything to persevere through those storms, not feeling down, not feeling like you're not good enough, not feeling that you want to quit. Because why? True words don't quit. True words of Christ pers pursue God's will, persevere in God's will, persevere through challenging relations and storms, and especially persevering through times of waiting. God permits us to go through those times of waiting for us to grow in virtue and more. For us to be more fruitful. For us to be better. That's why practicing serious humility is part of that package for us to be better. When you go through those storms, you try to practice exterior humility by what? Allowing yourself to trust more in God. God's province, God's time, and not quitting. Not feeding to giving up. Not making irrational decisions because of your selfish desires and because of things that are not falling into place. Right? So we constantly have to make that active effort to acquire that virtue of humility. The willingness to acquire that virtue is so important because God's not just gonna give it to you like abracadabra, no. He wants you to really work for it. So that when you really get it, you know you worked hard for it. You know 
that you really did everything you can to every sweat, every drop of effort to acquire that virtue of humility, right? So allow yourself to have that full conditioned mind, allowing yourself to not have blurred vision and be blinded by the devil himself. The devil himself will try to blind you with what the world thinks is okay. But that's not for you to immerse in the world, to blend in like everybody else. God calls you by your name. The devil himself calls you by your sin. Always remember that, my friends. My true words for Christ, that is how it works. God calls you by your name and the devil calls you by your sin. So when you feel certain vices rise, rising up to the surface within you, you know you should be aware and alert and you should know that's the enemy trying to knock on the door of your heart. But you don't yield to that. True words of Christ don't yield to failure. True words of Christ do not yield to defeats. But are victorious in every battle that they face. So don't ever be discouraged. Don't ever be afraid when it comes to facing persecution. Be ready to fight the good fight at all times. That is your calling. Not to blend in with what everyone else is doing. You're called to be different. Hence why God calls you by your name. Not everyone has the same name. I'm not talking about literally on paper name. In God's book of life names. So allow God to keep on calling you by your name and let him hear you. Let your heart hear God in his sheer silence, despite how much chaos, how much distractions, how much storms, how much spiritual attacks may be against you. Just remember that when you go through hardships and spiritual battles from the devil himself, always remember that it's a reminder for you to know that you're doing something right for God's glory and for God's kingdom. Because God permits it because he knows you will be victorious. He knows that you will win. That's why he permits it in your life. So therefore, be bold. Face those battles with full ambition, with full determination, with full love for God, not frustration, knowing that you can overcome it. Those fears, those insecurities that you have in your heart right now, get rid of it. Get rid of it. If you know you've made a wrong choice, make it right. Make amends in your life. When you know you're doing something it's not right, make amends in the eyes of God before it's too late. You don't want to wait till the last moment. If you can make amends now, do it while you can. And let God always be with you every step of that journey. Because practice, practicing humility in this world today is something that is such a huge challenge for each and every one of us. Because the more you try to practice humility, the more the enemy will try to combat that with pride. So remember, any works you do for God's glory or God's kingdom is God's work, not your work. When you see any ministry grow, it's God's work before your eyes. Always remember that. And that in itself, my friends, is exterior humility. So there you have it. Stay strong, stay bold, stay prudent, stay wise, and always do the best you can. And let God handle the rest. So as I was gonna say in all my podcasts and all my videos, don't be afraid to be true words of Christ. Bye! <laughs>